What's up, Jasmine, one third of Pretty Brown and Nerdy here. Sunday was the season finale of season seven of Game of Thrones, and we're just gonna talk about it. I wanted to gather my thoughts for this finale and the season as a whole, and I'm just gonna say it was kind of a mess. You no, know, I know what you're thinking. Jasmine, you are overcritical of everything that you watch. I try not to be, I try to give some slack, Cut me some slack, I'm trying my best to not be so negative, but there were a lot of problems this season. So I guess I can go ahead and start off with what I liked about the finale. I will say that in this video, there will be spoilers, so if you have not seen the finale, or you're just not even interested in Game of Thrones, why are you watching this video guys? Come on, get out of here. So we start off at the dragon pit and this is the scene that we've all been waiting for. The whole crew, everybody to just be in one scene all together. We've got like pretty much the whole cast in the scene and they're about to square up. Danny's showing off her army, Cersei's showing off what she got. Well, little bit of what she got. Everybody's just kind of on edge and there's a lot of tension about what's about to go down. Can I just say with this scene, everybody is wanting Clegane Bowl to happen. Like, can we just make it happen? Come on, y'all. The hound was up in the mountain space like, yeah, you remember me, I'm coming for your ass. And I was just like, oh shit, okay, I see you, I see you, the hound. Cersei side eye and Tyrion. And of course, Danny had to ride up on her dragon, you know, like the person that shows up on the red carpet late and just totally slays everybody's existence while just being like, sorry I was late guys. She literally pulled a Beyonce on these hoes. I could not. I enjoyed the little banter back and forth, you know, the whole white scene and friggin' Euron just like, oh, can they swim? No? Well deuces, I'm out, bye y'all. Can I just say like the scene between Tyrion and Cersei was the best dialogue that we've had all season long. That is not nearly enough to make up for the crap that we've dealt with, with for six episodes and y'all finally decide to give us some good dialogue? I mean, come on, y'all. And of course, the scene that we were all waiting for, the little finger death. I am so happy that it finally happened. We all have been waiting for this glorious moment and just to hear his pleas for help, literally little finger on the floor crying, begging Sansa for his life. That was the most satisfying thing I have seen in Game of Thrones altogether. That's probably one of the most satisfying deaths for me out of this entire show is watching Littlefinger die at the hands of his own dagger. That's how you do it, Arya, my girl. So, on to what I didn't like. I mean, why did we have to start the show with a bunch of penis jokes. I'm just over it. It seems like this whole season we've just been infatuated with penis jokes. I feel like I'm watching an American Pie film. Like, come on, David and Dan, y'all can do better with the script here. The scenes between Danny and John. I'm just gonna say it's really weird. We all know the incest thing is just not okay. It's not happening. It's not. No, no. And Danny and John shippers. Shame on you, y'all. Y'all nasty. Y'all is nasty. I just, I can't get into it. And together, their scenes, they have chemistry in some points, but for the most part, their facial expressions when they talk to each other are just, they're just dead. I love John. I think Jon Snow is fine as hell, but the boy cannot emote. He cannot emote. I was just waiting for the moment that Kit Harrington would give it to me. And it never came. Amelia Clark, she's a great actress. I love what she does with Danny. She doesn't always hit the mark, but overall, she's a pretty good Danny. But the whole John and Daenerys thing is it, just not working out for me, man. This is gross. I think that's kind of what how they want you to feel, and I feel like they're gonna lead up when they have the big reveal in season eight. I really think, honestly, the characters are probably gonna have the same reactions that we have. Hopefully. Aside from the little finger death, this whole Sansa and Arya Winterfell plot as a whole it's gonna be a no for me. I mean, this was hands, this was hands down the worst plot point of the entire season. What were they even doing in Winterfell? I feel like they honestly were just trying to create drama where there wasn't any drama. They were so focused on John and Danny. They were so focused on King's Landing, what was going on beyond the wall, that they thought to themselves, 
Aw oh, snap, we gotta write a plot for Winterfell. Just have like this whole conflict between the two that doesn't exist. I know that, you know, this whole time they were trying to lead it up to the point to have you think, have the audience think that, you know, they're fighting against each other and there's conflict between the two only to lead up to this big reveal. But honestly, it was predictable. We saw it coming. If it didn't lead up to this, we knew it was going to lead up to something else. And if it did lead up to that something else, then we just know this whole Winterfell plot would have went to a pile of shit. Let's just be real. But the fact that they didn't go that route and they were just like, huh, oh, just kidding. We were playing y'all the whole time. They actually weren't fighting with each other. They were in it all along with each other. And they were planning this whole reveal of Littlefinger being a traitor. You have it solely focused on that conflict and you don't show at any point when there's any resolve or when they come together and band together to outwit Littlefinger, then your plot kind of falls flat. Where in this was Bran? He was just all out bonding with the trees, bonding with nature, warring and stuff. Where was Bran in this entire plot point? He was sitting over there looking like Jaden Smith in his wheelchair the entire time. Fool didn't have anything useful to say to anybody, just walking up to people. I'm the Three-Eyed Raven. Didn't you know? I'm the Three-Eyed Raven. I'm the Three-Eyed Raven now. Fool did not say anything useful the entire season. I feel like they literally just were like, you know what? We're only gonna put Brandon scenes when we have to reveal something big. They, I, I wish they would have done so much more with him. They could have dove more into the secrets of the Crypts of Winterfell. They could have given us some more scenes in the past to lead up to the big reveal of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen. But instead, they just chose to show nothing leading up to that until the finale. Speaking of flashbacks, they've been talking about how Rhaegar Targaryen is supposed to be this fine, dude just supposed to be as total he's supposed to be a snack just like yes the finest targaryen in westeros he's supposed to be making people swoon with his voice and his music and how he go and he goes around singing and swooning the ladies like he he's supposed to be a complete heartthrob tell me why this fool look like great value walmart brand looking all inbred viserian mother this dude was butt ugly. That whole flashback scene just had me like, damn John, you definitely ain't get your looks from your daddy. This season alone, I mean, even without the, the plot leaks, was very predictable. It's getting to the point where Dan and Dave, the writers of the show and the producers of the show, up until now, they've had the books to fall off of. But with George R. R. Martin taking his damn sweet time on these books, they had no choice but to continue on and just kind of hope for the best. Oh, we're just gonna have them tell us the plot points and good luck, I guess we're gonna have to figure something out. This whole season to me felt like a fan fiction come to life. They were just like, we just gonna take whatever George told us, we just gonna make it work. And I'm not gonna lie and say that this season didn't have any strong points. Spoils of War was a great episode, Beyond the Wall was a great episode. But honestly, it's not enough to save this season for me. You have so many character arcs, so many stories to tie together in such a short amount of time to the point where they're so done with Game of Thrones, they really wanna be finished with it, that they're just choosing to rush things at the worst time. You don't rush things when the story is coming to an end. That's the point where you really wanna take your time because after eight seasons, do you really wanna go out with a flaw? With only seven episodes, they had to tie in so many things together and it's just not enough time. They had the Unsullied plot that just kind of fell off the map. They had the Sands kind of just fall off the map. What happened to Ilaria and, and her daughter? Where are they at? They had Yara's whole plot to just fall off the map. They just update you on what's going on with her through Euron. There was so much map hopping through this entire season because when you don't have enough time, Everybody just has to time travel between episodes. George R. R. Martin, I, I don't know what's going on with you, bro. We were supposed to have Winds of Winter last year and it just, I, I don't know what happened with that. I feel like if these books don't come out within some time next year, then we really just finish in with this show. I would have loved to experience this through the books first before the TV show 
but honestly, I can't blame David and Dan completely when this is pretty much all they have, all the source material they have to work with. Talking about how he's releasing all these maps of Westeros books and whatnot, but you can't, you can't give us another book, man. I'm perfectly okay with them waiting till 2019 to release the final season. They need to take their time with production starting in October. I really think they need to focus on the writing, the scripts, the dialogue, per everything. Oh, I think a lot of the reason why this season suffered is because they didn't use any of their top directors for this season. Bring back Miguel Sapochnik. Come on, I'm talking the dude that directed Hard Home, Battle of the Bastards, Winds of Winter. Bring Miguel Sapochnik back. This guy, what he does is just complete magic and to have him take the helm for the final season would just be like, yes. Really give people what they're needing and then y'all can go off somewhere and focus on other projects and forget about Game of Thrones. On to other projects, but not Confederate. All in all, a decent season, but it didn't hit the mark for me. I'm gonna give this season a generous eight out of 10. I did enjoy a lot of the action sequences and the CGI with the dragons was on point. The costumes were on point. Big ups to production. They did an amazing job. But I was just looking for a little bit more with the scenes between characters, a little bit more with the dialogue. And it was kind of lacking for me. The character interactions could have they struggle. I'm entering the next stage with, with hope. I'm nervous, but at the same time, I'm hoping that this will be a great season. As you can see, I've always been Team Targaryen and Team Stark anyway, but but without the incest, with, without the incest. So if you watched season seven of Game of Thrones, what did y'all think? Be sure to leave a comment below. And I just wanna let y'all know to go ahead and follow us on Twitch. We stream every Monday and Wednesday. New stream time's coming as well. And we just got a Patreon. So be sure to go over to our Patreon and go ahead and become a Patreon. Support us. Come on guys. All your help, all your support goes to a lot of what we do here to make this channel better for you guys and bring you more content, merchandise, and a few other things. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see y'all in the next video.